Have you ever bought a board game when your spouse said no? Have you ever won a game on an insane dice roll? Have you ever killed a dragon using only chopsticks? Do you text your friends to distract them from your current moves? Can you finish off a pizza in between your second and third turn? Can you ride a panda across the plains of Doo Dee Dewey? Do you have what it takes to stop an evil wizard from destroying your village? Do you tell your friends to call you Dungeon Master? Can you muster the strength to play one more game after 2 a.m.? Can you be the chosen one all the way up to bedtime? Have you ever dared to say no and pick your best friend's favorite character anyway? Have you ever randomly shouted nonsense because you thought it would be funny and it wasn't? Well, we haven't done most of those things either, but we are willing to try. Join us as we explore the world of board gaming and all the crazy things that come with it. Welcome to the Epic Gaming Night Podcast. Welcome to the Epic Gaming Night Podcast, a podcast about tabletop games, but mostly board games. With me tonight are Matt. Hello. Rob. Hey, hey. And Brandon. Hey, guys. How's it going? So uh, Brandon is from Analog Gamer, the guy that we uh, partnered with to do the t-shirts, the 4X stuff. Um, So uh, Brandon, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Social security number, major (laughs) credit cards, your address, all the good stuff. Uh, Maybe not that. Whoa. My phone, sorry. Yeah, (laughs) I'm I'm Brandon from Analog Gamer. I make t-shirts about board games. I don't know. That's awesome. (laughs) <laughs> do you play heads. lots of board games too i do yeah i uh i started out probably like five years ago just wanted to do something different than like video games and sitting around and looking at my cell phone and so i wrangled my friends into playing board games with me <laughs> yeah i think that's how uh most of us got started we're just like hey let's uh have some social interaction with some other people right yeah for sure, yeah, it's the best. Nice. Well, I guess we'll talk a little bit more about Analog Gamer later, um, as far as the company goes. Um, but first, we're going to talk about what we've been playing. So, uh, who wants to start that off? I think we should hear from Matt, since we haven't heard him in like two podcasts. <laughs> Matt's back, yeah. guys. The people need to hear Matt's voice and see his beard. Yeah. So, I went to Colorado, played some games, mostly Wiz War, but also. Uh, <laughs> played Catan and Dominion for the first time, oddly enough. Because those are two games that people are typically like, yes, I've played this a ton, and I love it, and it's great. Um, and this was your first time playing those? Yeah. It was, uh, so I kind of knew both, like, what they were about. Like, I knew Dominion was, like, a deck-building game, and I knew the basic premise of Catan, but I'd never, like, sat down and actually got into the nitty-gritty of it. I've never played Catan. Really? Yeah. It's not, well, I, it's not bad. I like myself, so I don't play that game. <laughs> our uh, <laughs> our strategy was don't trade with anybody ever. Um, ah, that that like and... <laughs> takes all of the game out of the game. It so so the the way it worked was like the the whole board was set up and everybody was like clumped together in little clusters. So we weren't rolling what we needed to each time. So nobody was getting resources and everybody was like, I've got some rocks and everybody's like, I don't need rocks. I've got rocks. Do you have a sheep? Just a sheep. Just one. <laughs> and everybody was like, nope. Or like logs. Our big thing was logs. Like we needed we needed wood like nobody's business. And I understand the connotation behind the statement. But, you know, <clears throat> it is what it is. Um, I know we played Dominion a couple of times. We played Dominion with like the, the recommended starter setup, which was okay. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, played with like the crazy variant where we just started drawing stuff out of the box. And that got really... Really did, interesting. Did you, uh, what was I going to say? Did y'all play with just the base set of Dominion or? I think so. I don't think there were any expansions. It was just a singular box. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause there are so. massive amounts. Of, they just released uh, another one too. Like it's been going strong for years and years. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like the first deck building game and it's probably the, the most expanded one out there. Oh Which, yeah. I mean, makes sense, but like they, they keep pumping them out. So it's best. It's, definitely the most like simplified down one but like there's a lot of cool combos you can pull off in that game yeah like that was the thing i thought was weird because 
first day we were in the game I played was legendary, so it's like, you know, you go from co-op to kind of a competitive thing. And then I'm just sitting there feeling inferior, and I'm like, cool, I can turn this into this and this, and that's my turn. And then somebody's like, and here's my hand, and I pick up another hand, and then I do this, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you guys are insane. You just need to slow down a bit. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, in Legendary, it's like, oh, well, I didn't do that good this turn. Uh, maybe I'll do better next turn. And we're working together and we're cheering <laughs> each other on and stuff because we play yeah. completely cooperative. But in, like, Dominion, it's like when you're like, and I have a handful of coppers just because I don't really have good stuff right now. And the next person, like, takes, like, ten minutes to take their turn because they've got so many actions and combos and stuff going on. You're just like, yeah. oh, they're dead. It is so fun to be that guy, now. though. It is fun to be that guy. <laughs> it is fun to be that guy. I, was say, I noticed it got to the point where everybody had like such long stringed combos, like nobody was counting stuff anymore, and they were like, so when I play this and I get an action, I draw a card, and I have another action, and this and that, and people are just like, mm-hmm, 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 my turn yet? Mm-hmm, take, mm-hmm. take your turn mm-hmm. faster. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I was just like, all right, then. Have you played Perfect. Dominion, Brandon? I have, yeah, quite a bit, actually. Yeah. I like it. I, uh, I used to have like this dominion app on my phone that had just like the base set before i think they got like a cease and desist order because i don't think it was actually <laughs> properly made <laughs> but uh like it was actually up on the apple store for a while it's not up there anymore but like i logged like well over like 350 games in that whoa <laughs> so like the base set i would just put it on random and i just play over and over and over again like honestly i don't even want to see any of the base set cards again <laughs> somebody is so crackly right now Probably me. <laughs> Matt's eating something. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, that game's pretty fun. Yep. Awesome. I can go next. I played uh, Crossmaster Arena. Um, I actually got it on sale at Barnes & Noble for 50% off, which was awesome. But uh, Oh, was that that little chibi game you were showing me? Yeah, yeah. We played it yeah. on Friday. Hold um, on. Is the sale still going on? I think it's down to 75 now. What? <laughs> You better run, Rob. Why didn't um, you tell me I would have bought, like, yeah, okay. Dude, I'm trying to help you, man. <laughs> I know you have a problem with buying games, and I knew Gen Con was coming up, so I didn't want you to go buy the entire store out. <laughs> I'm not going to lie that after I saw your post about the Barnes & Noble sale, I went there, and I was like, hmm, I'll see if there's any games on sale. There was nothing. Uh, so I was sad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when I went, all they had was Crossmaster and Rampage, but apparently uh, the one on, like, the other side of town had, like, a bunch more stuff. Um, so who knows, but, uh, but yeah, good times. But anyway, Crossmaster, it is a, um, basically a like miniatures game with these like really cute little like chibi pre-painted miniatures. Um, and it's like you play on a little hex grid and normally you can play like, I think the main game is two players and you have like four characters that you control and you're basically trying to knock out the opponent's characters or go around and collect gold to uh, steal victory points from your opponent. It's kind of cool because there's a lot of upgrades you can get for your characters. So they kind of made it sort of like a MMO or like a MOBA style thing where you start with like a basic character sort of thing. And they have like some cool powers and they're very different. But you can buy these upgrades um to like make those characters better and try to customize them the way you like to play the game with those characters so you go around like getting gold which would kind of be like you jungling or whatever like going around and picking up all the gold and things like that and then you buy your upgrades and then you fight each other to get uh gallons of glory which is the point of the game and uh whenever the other player doesn't have any victory points or glory or whatever um (coughs) then the game ends and you win um we played four player multiplayer which was very chaotic because we just did free for all so we're just all like attacking each other and people are running away trying to hide and like trying to like attack people when it like they're super weak so that they can actually kill them off and get the points and stuff like that um it was very it was pretty fun it's very light i guess um which is cool i mean i feel like i played it with my uh brother-in-law also we played two players and he's like nine and he uh really liked the game so it can work with uh, younger kids too so it's pretty fun cool sweet have you guys seen that game at all um i've never seen it played live but i have i've seen the box and uh, i saw some of your posts it looked cool it looked fun yeah it's pretty fun um there's like tons and tons of expansions for it and stuff like that which i don't think i'll pursue a whole lot of that i think i'll just play around with the base game and stuff like that for now actually i really want to buy and i'll probably i don't know on my list of things I want to buy at Gen Con, I really want to get Arcadia Quest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listening to the Secret Cabal a lot, listen uh, recently, and they're like 
absolutely in love with that game right now. Right. And uh, just some of their stories, like, I don't know, I want to be a part of that. <laughs> I feel like if I buy the game, they'll invite me over to play, even though they already have, like, three copies. They, and that's never going to happen, but in the fantasy world of, of me... You know, if I buy the game, then all these cool people are going to ask me to play with them. And you know, it, it's, it uh, cool. it's Eric Lang, so you can't go wrong with Eric Lang. I will be getting his picture at this gym. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. So, uh, who wants to go next? I can go. I don't know. Awesome. Right. So, I picked up recently uh, the game Lanterns. I don't know if you guys ever heard that at all. Yeah, I've heard of Lanterns, yeah. It's a pretty cool, like, tile placement. Uh -huh. uh, it uh, what's the other set collection kind of game? Um, but it's super beautiful. The, the components are pretty nice, but the art's awesome on it. It's I actually have it right here. This right here. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen tons of pictures of that on Instagram. I didn't actually know like what game it was. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> I I am a sucker for tile placement games, and my wife loves them also. So that's an insta buy because she'll play it with me. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But it's it's super easy. You kind of um, you take turns. If you place a tile, um, you get a card from the pool. But then, whatever other uh, lanterns are facing the other players, they get that color of lanterns. So when you play something, everyone else gets something. So you kind of want to play keep away a little bit and not give someone else what they need. Hello. So it's kind of a cool uh, cool aspect of the game. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. My wife likes it, and it's beautiful to look at too. So that's always good. Awesome. It's always nice when the spouse will play with you. It is. That's a major selling point for a game for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How does the uh, the game end? Like, what's the like victory condition and stuff like that? Uh, once, once you, um, once you get all the, uh, the, once all the tiles are gone, then you add like the, because uh, you set, you play, you play cards like sets, and then once you get like these little um, victory chits. Mm-hmm. And then uh, once the tiles are gone, the most the person with the most points off those chits. Like once you put a set in, so say you all, uh, four of a kind, you take the top chit that's like worth ten points or whatever it oh, is, gotcha. and then that that points slowly decrease as the pile goes down. Gotcha. So trying to get the specific things first is it, much better. Exactly. Yeah, if that makes sense. Do you, do you <laughs> score farmers at the end? No, I'm just kidding. No, no. Uh, <laughs> it's a different game, actually. I, I was just thinking. I was just thinking. You said tile placement, and like it ends when. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Carcassonne. Good times. I I was laughing when I was thinking about this game because I'm like, man, those guys love Ameritrash, and I kind of a little bit are more like Euro, kind of like I love Carcassonne and stuff like that. And I'm like, I can't say that to them; they're gonna hate me. <laughs> yeah, man. I've I've played like tons of Carcassonne. I've played tons of Settlers of Catan, and like I actually like really like like. I really like like the light euros. They're like fun yeah. to play, and I think they're a lot easier to get out with like my wife and stuff like that when there's sure, not yeah. as much direct confrontation. Um, but yeah, we have no problem with that sort of stuff. It's just like the <laughs> the really heavy stuff where no, I yeah. spent like multiple hours, and then it's just like, well, that guy won and I lost. <laughs> the yeah. end. Yeah, no, I can do. I like euros. They're fun. I just the euros to me seem a little broken. Like. If you're in first place and you know what you're doing, it's really hard to lose the game. Like once yeah. you get that lead, like okay, you're set. Once you have the right combo, it's 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 hard to to have other people catch up to you. That's why I like games with dice, um, or more mirror trash and like conflict and other games like that because the dice are never your friend. And um, you could have the best cards and best everything, but if you roll horribly, um, it doesn't matter how great you are. And so that, that's what attracts me more. Rather yeah. than just watching other people win, sometimes <laughs> sometimes they like program like catch up mechanics into some of those games and stuff like that. But a lot of like the hardcore people don't even like that because they they right? want to they want to have the superior strategy, get ahead, yeah. and just keep on winning. And good times. <laughs> Sweet. So um, I I am full nerd now. Uh, I play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> um, I've never played before. You've made it. You made have, it, man. I have made it. Um, Join the club. So did you play a gnome? N bro, I played. <laughs> I'm a hill dwarf. <laughs> so there's like six different options of characters. We played the fifth edition starter set, and uh, there's six different options of like base characters to start from. And I was looking at all these different guys, and I said, wouldn't it just be funny? Because I'm six foot four, uh, like big 
I'm not going to throw out that number. I'm six foot four and I'm big. <laughs> Let's just think. And uh, so I was like, man, it'd be kind of funny if I picked like the smallest person available. <laughs> and so you didn't go I halfling to... though. <laughs> so I am a warrior hill hill dwarf, and uh, my name is Gomad, and it stands for gatekeeper of my own destiny. And we're kind of <laughs> making our dungeon keeper mad because I'm completely going against everything he says. Um, and and granted, everyone in this game is brand new. Everyone is brand new. No one has played this game before in my group that we're playing with. And so he's trying to like tell us like, "Hey, you may want to go to this forest." You like, there's something <laughs> there. And I'm like, "Nah, I'm gonna take my axe and we're gonna go back over here and we're just gonna, like kill this fairy that we saw that's supposed to be helping us, but she's getting on my nerves. So I'm just gonna like throw it at the fairy." And so I rolled the dice a lot. I lost a lot. I'm rolling the dice. Um, <laughs> But I'm having a lot of fun. It's 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 kind of crazy. Um, I'm now probably going to buy some D and D stuff at Gen Con. Um, maybe get like a little figurine. I don't know. But Dungeons and Dragons, it's fun. Um, I don't feel like I'm the Antichrist or like I'm going to hell or anything like that from like the 1990 churches or stuff like that. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I I will play it some more. But then on a side note, I my wife left the other day to go visit her family and so I was bored and I was like hey Roy let's play a game and he was like bro let's play Battle Lore and I was like sweet Battle Lore it's kind of like uh, the Battle of Westeros Battle Lore okay well Battle of Westeros Battle Lore scores points differently than Battle Lore scores points and so I went in there with the mentality of I'll go get victory points at the end and for those people that don't know Battle Lore it's a command and colors game you have your different units they have different abilities and you're trying to get victory points by doing objectives, and you can custom build your army, or you can uh, make a pre-built army. I just went in there with the mindset of, I want to kill Roy's army. And for some reason, the first couple turns it bothered me, because he was completely fine with that. <laughs> but he also sat on all of the victory points, like, every turn. And so, like, by the third turn, it was 11 points to 1. And we're playing sixteen points. There was no like, way to catch up, not even was, a little bit. Yeah, there was. It was over. But I was like, bro, I just killed like these units, and my guy's doing good here. And and I made some mistakes not playing um, this type of battle or before. But um, I still had a lot of fun. Uh, the components, um, the components of the game were very well built, and uh, I Roy's painted some of his uh, pieces, and they came out really good. It was a lot of fun. I'm probably gonna start buying some battle or stuff. Um, even though I have every single expansion to all of the Battle of Westeros, um, Game of Thrones one, which is fun, but that was fun. But I I got my butt handed to me. I was like sixteen to two when we were done. Matt, I had Matt fun, knows but, that feeling. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Like, it was completely my fault. But I I felt like I was doing good until turn three. Once he turned in all these points, and he was like, "Oh yeah, because I'm sitting on this, and I get, and I get this bonus because I own these houses." And yeah, I'm doing this. It's like, oh my gosh. So yeah, yeah, the game's over. And not to say that it was time this way, but I was like, "All right, Roy. Now since I know what I'm doing, let's play a game. Let's play again." And he was like, "No, my wife's home. <laughs> Can't play again." Some of us, you know, some of us do have to get up at six a.m. to go to work in the mornings. <laughs> That is true, but I do work late with clients. But anyway, besides that, I had a blast. A good game. I would definitely want to play it again. Yeah, I always try to make sure when teaching that game, just be like, hey, the point of the game is victory points, and these are how you get them. You have to go and sit on them. Okay, but when you have, like, this big, like, giant dragon-looking creature that doesn't have wings, and he just, like... You're like, I don't, I don't want like, to move him up there to just sit him on a victory point for right? turn after I turn. Wanna I want to like, kill something. I want to eat the horse man. And like rip his body in half and throw him and use him as my weapons, and that's what I did, and I and I lost terribly. <laughs> that's Terrible. okay. At least you didn't have a like a giant rock golem ballista that just sat in the back shooting arrows at literally nothing all game. <laughs> <laughs> he shot it at something. He just didn't hit anything. I was rolling good. I oh really was rolling good. But hey, man, you guys got some lore during that game, Matt. You had so much lore. You're casting all the cards. <laughs> oh god. It was yeah. fun. I had a good time. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen Bad Lore at all, Brandon? I've seen it, I've never played though. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. The the, the minis fun. that Fantasy Flight <laughs> has made for those is just crazy and Yeah, they look awesome. I, I was gonna say more, but I'll probably talk about it later on in the show. So <laughs> 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 Awesome. 
So uh, that's what we've been playing. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about what Analog Gamer is. So, uh, Brandon, do you want to just tell us like what Analog Gamer actually is? It is a clothing brand that sells board game apparel. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, wow. it's as simple as that. I know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what got you into uh, wanting to make like board gaming apparel? Honestly, I when I started playing board games, I kind of instantly started looking for T-shirts to like show off my hobby <laughs> that or the hobby that I like. And I kind of I found a few here and there, but I didn't really find anything that like I don't know I wanted to wear or like I liked. And because of my job, I am able to make T-shirts. So I uh, just decided one day, hey, I should make some T-shirts, and that's kind of where it went. Was it like, hey, boss, I'm going to stay after hours <laughs> for a little bit. Don't worry about all this ink that's gone. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, well, the cool thing about the, the cool thing about the print shop that I uh, work at is that they, um, like, kind of everyone there has a clothing line, <laughs> and okay. they kind of do stuff on side on this side. It actually started as the owner; he had a clothing line, and he was printing shirts from other places. But then he decided to do it all himself, and it kind of turned into a print shop from there. Yeah. So. It's pretty cool, and it. I mean, it's nice being around them because they have a lot of uh, expertise and can tell me what to do and what not to do, so that helps. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, cool. Yeah, I, I think that's how, like, we sort of got started with the whole, like, making some Epic Gaming Night uh, shirts or whatever with, like, the 4X. It's just like, you know what I'd really like to see on a shirt <laughs> is, like, this exactly. 4X thing because, like, I love these, like, Eclipse and Twilight Imperium games, but, like... I need a way to show it to people, like my 4X pride, like. Um, right for sure. So uh, that's like by far like my favorite shirt to just wear. <laughs> so like I that's have awesome. to like whenever I wear it, it's like man, the shirt needs to be washed. It's gonna <laughs> suck. Like I actually have to like wash it now, and I can't wear it for a while. So. You but, um, and Sam Healy both love that shirt. Do man. I, I'm he glad is, he likes it. <laughs> He's worn it in like every video I've seen that they've put out yeah. for the last little while. I know it's been kind of crazy just watching their videos and be like, "Hey, there's a shirt that yeah. I designed or made or helped make." Yeah. 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 I'm pretty good. sure like one of like the last things I watched from them, like every single shirt that they were all wearing was a shirt that you made. So yeah, that's I'm like, pretty yeah, cool. that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's been fun, and I've been able to meet a lot of new people, too, like, obviously, you guys, so that's that's been exciting, too. So, yeah. That's, um, like, an item off your bucket list. Exactly. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, if, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, make sure to check out AnalogGamer.com, because they have several different things. It's not all just, like, the 4X thematic stuff, and they have, like, some of the Dice Tower stuff, but they have stuff that could could be, like, done with, like, role-playing, like, the, mm -hmm. the That's How I Roll, or whatever shirt says yeah. shirt. the and, red knight meeple and like if you like chess or like just to show that you like that sort of board games like all sorts of different stuff over there so make sure to check all that out yeah and i i have some other shirts down kind of the pipeline that i'm working on right now hopefully trying to expand that but it's a slow slowly but surely kind of just growing the store and yeah if you have if anyone has any ideas or with anything they'd like to see on a shirt email me <laughs> and uh if if you want i just to, saw uh, i just saw rob's <laughs> eyes eyes light up <laughs> like i'm probably gonna get like a bunch of emails back like i'm not allowed to put that on a shirt i don't that's do inappropriate it. Like, if like if it's we'll licensed, get a cease and desist order <laughs> yeah. so what is your <laughs> do we need to wait till like after hours to ask for the email because <laughs> no. you'll get just... like i don't know if you know how big we are you'll get like 17 <laughs> different emails from, no, from Rob. Yeah, right. 17 different emails from Rob. <laughs> yeah. I All of them are just have included attachments of like napkin drawings. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Drawn in crayon. I just hey, want on. a shirt with my name on it in every different language in the world spelled out. That's. Do, do you think uh, that Rob yeah. Loves Risk shirts would sell very well? <laughs> um, I'd buy like 100. Exactly. <laughs> He'd buy at least as many copies as he's bought of uh, Risk Legacy. It's sad but true. I've bought a lot of <laughs> No, but seriously, okay, before you go, I'm definitely getting your email. Since you put that awesome. out there, you know, I just... No, I, I for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, um, well, it, it's just Brandon at AnalogGamer.com, so as simple as that. Nice. And hey, if you guys want to see more board game shirts, 
make sure to buy some of the ones that are in the store because that'll help uh, make more. <laughs> but sure. stay tuned. New and upcoming things. Is <laughs> Harry got a sharp in his hand? <laughs> <laughs> got like a pad of papers hey, just scribbling away for the rest of the podcast. I am a Matt. <laughs> Listen, I'm inspired. I'm, inspired. I'm, hoping at, I'm hoping at Gen Con he'll like give me like four napkins and be like, these are it. These are <laughs> he it. just walks up to you with like, he just walks up to you with like a thick note, like, like a binder, phone. and it's like, here you go. <laughs> It's and like, then we oh, look, and there's like a random trash can, and there's the same napkin sitting in them. He's <laughs> like, Brandon, what did you do? You threw them away. And, and that's why I won't bring them. I'll have them, but I won't bring them. Uh, just because I don't want to face the rejection. So I, I'm open to all ideas. No worries. <laughs> nice. So are we allowed to ask questions even though I swore I wouldn't ask any questions? Shoot, man. To, to me? Yeah. So, yeah. So what got you into uh, design? You know, like, I understand you were looking for the clothing apparel or the things you like. I do the same. Like, I have, like, shirts of, like, movies and, and other games and stuff that I like. So I get that. But, like, what got you going or what made you want to be a designer? Uh, when I was, like, when I was, I don't know, a teenager, I started a small little clothing brand with some of my friends. And yeah. then I kind of started it. And it just was like a, it was actually a bicycle clothing brand kind of thing. And it didn't really go anywhere and it wasn't very cool. But at the time we thought it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, that kind of spurred me to start to like look into design and want to do that. And yeah. uh, it's kind of history from there. But yeah, I, I don't know. I've always been into like art and design and music and things like that. So I kind of gravitate towards that kind of stuff at that. Have you done anything else outside of clothing when it comes to the art scene and stuff like that? No, not not. Really. I mean, like at my job, I just do some like you know stuff for the clients that come in there for like t-shirts mm -hmm. and things, but nothing yeah. really outside of that. No. Okay. I I, I will say that I, I don't think I'm very good. I look at some board game art and I'm like, I don't know if I could ever do that. <laughs> And I look at most games in awe, thinking, if only someday. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually really excited to meet Fernanda. I don't know if you guys know who that is. She's like one of the main Plat artists oh, yeah, yeah. at Plat yeah, Hat. Yeah. And she did all of the artwork for Dead of Winter and uh, Ashes. And um, she's now, I don't know if she's at their office, but I think she's pretty much full time now. And she's going to be, she's already there at Gen Con. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I keep so, seeing of all these pictures of people being like, hey, I'm in Indianapolis. What are I know. you guys doing? Hit me up. I'm like, oh, why am I not there? You want to go right now? Let's go. Dude, uh, <laughs> I'll just call out of work tomorrow and it'll be good. <laughs> why not? Let's just go. The funny thing is they, they messed up like my work schedule. And um, for some reason, they had me scheduled off for Monday and Tuesday. I don't know why. But they have me working tomorrow. So I can't just be like... <laughs> I, I went to work both days, but it's still kind of funny. I'm just like, hey, I'm I'm here. I'm off next Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> but yeah, good times. So I, I have to I have to work for like an hour tomorrow morning, and that's it. And then I'm out of here. <laughs> I get to do a uh, full day. So <laughs> I never stop working. Even at Gen Con, I'll be answering emails and phone calls the whole time I'm there. I'll be working on the podcast. Networking, that is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> nice. Um, so our topic for tonight, besides Analog Gamer, is Gen Con 2015. Since Can I ask him another question before we get into Gen Con? Sure, Rob. <laughs> Do it. Well, I'm just, I'm just inter I'm interested. I've never met Brandon before. We're not Facebook friends yet or anything like that. So <laughs> Soon. Um, Soon. <laughs> So, like, how did you get involved? Like, how did this whole thing with Tom and, and everybody else start? Like, because everyone knows the Dice Tower. If you're sure. a board gamer, it's the Dice Tower. How did you land that? Who are you married to? <laughs> well, if you look at my family tree. No, I'm just kidding. Right. Uh, no, I actually, he does something. I'm sure you guys know the Jack Vassell Memorial Fund yeah. auction yeah. on, on yeah. Board Game yeah, Geek every son. year. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I. Uh, I emailed him initially and said, hey, I'm going to make some shirts to auction off that people can bid on and then just raise money for that. So I, I've i been watching the videos since I started gaming because it's an awesome resource and yeah. um, noticed I was like, shut the door. And then the other shirt I made was the uh, Ameri Thrash Gamer. Yeah, yeah, I think that one's awesome. Yep. And then um, I think there was one other one I did. 
oh, like it was keep calm and shut the door, I think it was. And so I just made those and I emailed him first and said, hey, I want to make these to auction them off. And he's like, they look, look awesome. Yeah, do it for sure. So we did that. They, um, people bid on them. They did pretty well. And then after, I was kind of like, hey, I've been thinking about starting Analog Gamer for a while, and I kind of had that thought in the back of my head. And I, um, I just reached out to him and said, hey, I'd, I'll take care of all the fulfillment and printing and everything. I just need to go ahead from you. And we kind of worked out an agreement where we each get a cut out of it, and it worked out pretty good. That's awesome. Uh, but simply just emailing him, I don't know. Tom's so nice, and he gets really back to your emails. he gets back to your emails instantly, like, faster than... I don't even know how he does it. <laughs> I emailed him one time, and he told me that he wasn't interested at the time, and you know that he thought I was a nice guy, but to keep my distance. So, <laughs> <laughs> were you like proposing oh, like yeah. for a date or something? Or? No, 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 hey, no. Man, uh, it didn't exactly go down that way, but he was. I like, really you know, like just, you a whole lot. <laughs> like, just keep at it. Just, that's great. He's just sitting there like. So. Yeah, so I saw you at the Olive Garden last night, <laughs> and looking good. <laughs> but I did get my picture with him last year, and I will do that again this year. Nice. That's awesome. not weird. All right, so, Roy, I won't ask any more questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good, man. You're good. Yeah, it's all good. Gen Con 2015. Okay, one more question. Tonight. How much was that Twilight Imperium? <laughs> I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> MSRP. <laughs> nice. All right, I'm done. So uh, I guess me, Brandon, and Rob are all going to be going to Gen Con. Um, Woo! So we'll have to we'll have to give Matt all the uh, the stories of the epicness that happened while we were there. I'm going to get back. Matt's Matt's gonna be like tired of hearing it like after the, like the next few podcasts is just gonna be like man stop talking about it guys I'm just gonna get like thirty group messages a day like oh my god check this out and I'll be like guys I'm at work <laughs> please sucks to be you okay we really do we really do sometimes go on like tantrums on our little uh, group text <laughs> like it's and I'll insane. see like two or three from Roy and then I'll put in a couple and then like two or three more from Roy and then maybe one small one from Matt that's like cool and then like or just like a smiley and, face like a, yeah. yeah oh and then of course brandon he texts in and i'm like brandon you're crazy man calm he's down he's all like what, what time's the show at man. and 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 rob's like no nope. you animal you he's the wee's guy uh, oh man um but yeah so uh what um games that are coming out at gen con are you guys excited for I, I can totally I, I've start. I've got a list. I've, I've already wrote down my list. <laughs> list. Oh, Rob, you start yeah. since you have a list, so you want to talk about multiple ones. Um, so that way you uh, can say one, and then we can switch up, and then you can one say that more. I know nobody else has on their list. Uh, I'm super, super, super pumped for Game of Thrones Risk from USopoly. A uh, huge, not so much of a big Game of Thrones fan itself, even though I do love the board game. But uh, love Risk, and this Game of Thrones Risk is coming out with two different boards, and I think it's gonna ha it's gonna have your standard three different versions of play, but they may have a new version. Um, I, I don't know all of the details yet, but a lot of risks now. It's not just your world domination. There's also mission risk and like team risk and things like that. Um, but enough about Risk. But I'm super excited for Game of Thrones Risk. The components Oof. look amazing. The board looks amazing. Do you know yeah. exactly like which houses are actually in the game? It has like, um, uh, the Starks, it has the Targaryens, it has the Baratheons, it has the Greyjoys, it has the um, uh, the Martells, and then it has the um, uh, the the Green Guys. Who are the Green Guys? The Rose. The uh, they're simple as the Rose. Tyrells. The Tyrells. Yeah, I mean, it, it's got the major families that are involved. They've all come together to have an agreement. The families have come together. And that was a horrible impression. I apologize. Actually, they but, like uh, never come together. They just all slaughter each other all the time. Oh, no, they go to <laughs> weddings, and then they kill each other at the weddings. Um, spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Don't go to any weddings. I was going to say, I'm surprised they even put the Starks in the game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right? It is really bad. But, um, it's just two people. It's like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bobby Stark. No one's ever heard Actually, of me. Like, if you are a Stark, don't say that you're a Stark. Just say you're Bobby. Like, I'm just Bobby. 
Okay. <laughs> anyway, AJ's really mad excited. in chat that we ruined Game of Thrones for him. No, uh, that's okay. Okay, that happened like in the <laughs> second book, or I think like season three or whatever on the show. If you're that far behind, AJ. You I'm just... pretty sure he ha- probably hasn't watched like any of it. So. It was on Good Morning America. It really was like the big, uh, the big uh, spoiler. So and so dies at the wedding, and then the mom dies. It was what? Yeah. Anyway, so what <laughs> games are you guys excited about? I'll go. Um, so I'm really yeah. excited for this game called uh, Mysterium. I'm pretty sure it comes out from Asmo Day. Basically, on my basically and... the uh, the way the game works is it's a cooperative game, and one player is the uh, ghost. Yep. And then the other players are like the people that are like living in this house and they have a certain amount of time to figure out how the uh, where the ghost was killed, what the ghost was killed by, and who killed the ghost or whatever the ghost player. Um, but basically the way that you go about figuring this stuff out is the ghost player cannot talk whatsoever during the game. Um, they just have to hand the player cards that look very much like Dixit cards or just straight up art. So they're giving the players art cards to try to direct them into what the murder weapon is, who the killer is, and what the location is. And I think like you do that in different phases. Like first, you have to figure out like where the location is. I've never actually played the game. I'm hoping to demo it at Gen Con. But first, you have to figure out like the location. Then you got to figure out the weapon, and then figure out who the exact person is. And you have a certain amount of like hours within the game to do this. So there's a certain number of rounds, um, and everybody loses if you can't get that stuff figured out so it's kind of like Dixic and clue mixed together so yeah. it definitely looks very uh interesting the company that is producing the game it's uh lil blood l-i-b-e-l-l-u-d yeah lil i think blood. that's like the uh the it's company. under the umbrella of asthma day right but, yeah. so i think asthma day is bringing it to uh to america yeah no, it's kind of cool. like plaid hat did specter ops with niska gaming so. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people um, got, like, the uh, the overseas version, um, which had, like, completely different artwork. They've redone all the artwork for the Asmo Day version and had, like, a game screen for the, the ghost to sit behind um, with, like, some cheats on the back of it and stuff like that to help them out. And no coughing. Cool stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting over a cold, so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Rob's already coughed, like, twice, I think. I have. I, Roy, I did hear though that the cards in Mysterium might be the same as the Polish version. I don't so know the actual they're... pictures on them themselves. Yeah. So that's, just I like the box art and all that are just different. Yeah, I have no idea if that's true or not. And I have no whatever. clue how to say the name, like the nope. original name of it. Like I don't even. I'm not even going to try. Yeah. You mean <laughs> so, the Polish edition? <laughs> the Polish edition. That's right. So. Man, that game looks great. I feel like it's a game that I could probably um, play with my wife because she loves Dixit. But it's Dix. It's a competitive game, so someone always wins or loses. But she also loves cooperative games because she likes to like work together and not have to get mad when someone uh, wrecks you in a game. So we that can all lose eight. together. <laughs> that made number eight on my list. Nice. Cool. So how about so you, Plushik? There's so many. I I'm having a hard time choosing what I'm most excited about. But I I have to say, Cash and Guns gets a lot of play at my house and that expansion. expansion looks amazing yes that added guns and just all the new stuff i'm super excited to pick that one up yeah we love cash and guns yeah i really wonder like how like it integrates in like how you get like the different guns and stuff like that i know that. it's like oh i haven't heard gosh. i haven't heard that you can have two guns at once by from some character or something which would be <laughs> awesome and you can you can point them at two different people aj <laughs> you do not get that character he, he's already saying boom just, in, the, in the chat, so you know. He'll just be at, he'll just be out of bullets that much faster, though. Think about it. <laughs> It'd be even two. better, like if you can point at two different people. Like, oh my gosh! I know. I'm like, so excited. He's got like Uzis and like a little like Derringer thing and like a revolver, so you can pretend to be Vash the Stampede. Oh yeah! I just want the tiny little <laughs> flintlock pistol that's like. Yeah. Like old school black powder that you're like, you know, like a little ramrod for you, like, hee hee, boom, ha. Yes. <laughs> Just run around murdering things. You should make that noise next time we play the game if you shoot somebody. Hee hee, boom. Like, please do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. 
I figure out the best way to to do good in that game is just to like be super quiet and like yes, don't, don't say anything. Because my problem is like I pay attention to who's like winning and who has mm-hmm. the most points. Like I try to play really close attention, but I make the mistake of calling them out constantly, yes. and then everybody <laughs> shoots at me. Like I'm like guys. This person's winning. We need to take them out. And then, of course, they shoot at me because I'm calling them out. And yeah. then, like, three other people point at me because they're like, Roy's winning. He's trying to blame it on other people. I'm like, guys. Snitches get stitches. I was like, count the money. Like, that guy's got, like, 37 <laughs> paintings. We're going to lose. That's My friends are the same way. They're like, oh, Brandon's in this game. Let's kill him. He needs yeah. to die first. <laughs> I, the first time I played this game, I played with all people that I didn't know very well. Oh my gosh, I wrecked them so bad because I was like super quiet and like I was just playing the game like really good and like I got like tons of paintings and they I was just they weren't paying attention because they didn't know me but like my group does not work because they're like <laughs> no. it's Roy in him yeah. so I don't know if I've ever won the game like with my group just because they don't let it happen <laughs> yep <laughs> but I still have a blast trying to knock oh, the people so out much fun. and survive one of the one of my favorite party games of all time. For sure, yeah. So, so more guns and more cash is always better. <laughs> and more characters and more powers, I think, too. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. So, Matt, what game are you excited for me to buy? <laughs> Did you have a chance to look at the list at all? Or? No. <laughs> no. Is the um, is the Dead of Winter expansion coming out? Is that one of the things? Or is that not yet? That not is yet. not yet. Damn it. <laughs> Family friendly podcast. Uh, it's fine. I was no, talking about. Uh, I was talking about a, a cement wall that holds up water, and use the operant word "it" afterward. Yeah. Um. Anyway, no, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's see. Do we, we want to keep talking about games, or do we want to go in a different subject? Because I'm adding value. What is What does Matt want to see the most at Gen Con? Rob, what's another one of the games that you're excited about? Okay, I'm really excited um, about uh, this new pretzel company, but it's really not a new company. Yes. I think that's – isn't that off of Z-Man Games? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's yeah like a, I think it's like a sister company or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty much like they're laid back. The Their basis behind calling a pretzel company, it's, it's a game that you can play while eating pretzels in your other hand. So it's like games that you can play with one hand. Um, I'm really excited for Flick 'Em Up. That just oh, looks man. so cool to me. Uh, with the cowboys and you get to shoot each other and you have to like knock each other over if you don't it doesn't count as a hit like that looks like so much fun i definitely see me losing pieces it's <laughs> like like just like throwing things at people and knocking stuff over but again like playing with our group and playing with some other people i know that game will get played a lot i hope have, it doesn't sell out have you played rampage rob um i have not played rampage and the only reason why i didn't is to be honest, and and I know you played it, I know you own it. It looks cheap to me. What? Like, well, like the components and everything, they look cheap. The one thing that really excites me about Flick 'em Up is it's <laughs> solid wood. No, everything is like heavy and durable, and they're even they're like it's priced at that. I think it's like seventy five dollars or something like that MSRP. But they're saying like these are gonna last. They built them to be like smashed into each other over and over and over again they're saying the quality of the components are really great and so that's what i'm really excited about rampage it looks fun i just haven't played it but then once i saw them demo this yeah, at uh, looks crazy. origins and things like that and um the game fair that was in new york it just looks amazing i'm okay. super pumped i think it's really cool that there's like a bunch of buildings and stuff and like you there's like little holes that you have to like try to like yeah, get you your, have, guy you, in. your guy like, in i'm going into the saloon in the so you gotta like yeah. go up in the saloon and then you're like actually yeah. in there if another person goes in there with you they can like do like a duel and stuff you like have that. to have a duel only one person can be in a building at a, at a time and so, so, like, so it's just you have a I duel just so see like you have like little discs book. and yeah. um you start really far apart and then um, you have like little bullet discs, and you try to flick it and hit their their character um, yeah. over. Um, and if you miss, then you then they get to move one space closer, and they get to try to shoot at you. And you basically go just go back and forth until somebody you knocks keep going the other person you knock over. Them down. Yeah, um, which is really awesome. Um, but they've already like announced an expansion for that game, um, which has like like um, horses and like little yep. ramps to like flick it. the bullets up and like knock people off the horses. It's just like yes. crazy. So uh, that would be awesome to. Uh, I'm excited for that. Yeah, that that one is on my list. Definitely want to demo it at least, and hopefully buy it if they have copies. I, I Which have, demoing is so important there, but we'll get into that. I, I 
was I going to say? I just think it's fun to have, like, some of those, like, silly games that... Yeah. Just, like, I mean, it's you can't really take it seriously. You're just flicking discs around a board. But, I mean, it, you have a great time doing it, so... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So are there any other games that you guys are excited about? Um... I can go all day. <laughs> I was, like, looking through pages and pages and pages. And my thing is, like, I'm super frugal about the games I get because I don't really get a whole lot of games. So I'm just like, that looks kind of cool, but uh, I'd have to demo it first. And this looks kind of interesting, but I'd really like to see a review. So, yeah. How about you, How about you, Pleshik? Or Brandon? Or can I call you Brandon Pleshik or Mr. Analog Gamer? Whatever your heart desires. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's a few games. I uh, that Firefly dice game, the oh, shiny yeah. dice, looks kind of cool. Yeah. I don't. I was reading something or listening to a podcast, and he was saying that it's a hard push your luck game. Like it's actually hard, and nice. that sounds kind of interesting. I don't know. Like bang the dice game is a huge hit with my group yeah. and my friends, and so that kind of sounds cool. Um, and then there was uh, well, the legendary encounters. The predator looks pretty awesome. Yes, that is on my list as well. Super pumped. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for. Um, they're supposed to be releasing uh, Legendary Secret Wars. Oh, so, I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm really big into like all the uh, Marvel Legendary stuff, which I know a lot of people have moved on and gotten into <laughs> all the like um, Encounter stuff. So every time I'm like, "Hey, check out Marvel Legendary," they're like, "Hey, man, have you seen uh, Encounters?" And I'm just like, "Yes, yes, I have." But um, I'm really excited about it. Like that's my wife's favorite game. So if I get an expansion, I know I'll be able to get it to the table because I can play it with her. But this one um, is really cool because uh, it adds, like, a bunch of really cool stuff. Like, you could actually have, like, one player play against all the other players, which is kind of interesting. Okay. I, I think they're, I like taking, they're taking some, like, keys from uh, the Encounter series and, like, adding them into this game. And yeah. then there's also, like, you can actually play as Thanos, which Thanos is awesome. So that's, yeah. that's all you need to know. So I was like, that, that should be pretty cool. I'll probably pick up that uh, maybe maybe after Gen Con. And then they're like, there's Thanos. And I'm like, I need to buy it now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so have you guys heard of Pingo Pingo? I've heard that... of it. It's the from Yellow, Yellow Games. Um, and it actually comes with like the, the old style um, gunpowder pistols and all that stuff. You have to cock the lever back. And then you set up different penguins throughout the room and uh, you have to shoot them and complete objectives and stuff while other people are doing things at the same time i don't know a toy gun that actually works like that shoots a dart at a penguin and i love penguins i don't want to like kill a penguin <laughs> but like you get to shoot something it just looks really really fun it looks like a, a fun light-hearted game um and so i'm really excited for that one and have you guys heard or are you guys fans are you pumped for the uh, reprint of fury of dracula I saw that. I'm kind of interested, um, like, to learn more about the game. I've heard the Secret Cabal talk about it a lot, and I've heard, like, other yeah. people talk about it a bunch. Um, but it's, like, another one of those, like, hidden movement games. And it's supposed yes. to be, like, one that takes even longer to play. Yeah. So I've got Letters from Whitechapel, and I'm really excited to play um, Spectre, Spectre Ops. Ops. So it's, yeah. like, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I agree. And then... Um, Last one, and then I'll stop. Uh, um, Mar Nostrum from uh, Academy Games. Um, I, I like Academy Games. They make good quality games. Their components aren't so great. They have like a lot of wood pieces, like simple little meeples, but um, uh, games are really great. You know, They did the Underground Railroad and the Battle of 1776 and uh, uh, Conflict of Heroes and other things like that. I am, I'm really excited for Mar Nostrum. I know it's a reprint. I haven't played the original game, but the idea of building an empire and doing trading and, and conquering and everything, it seems like a very complete game. It, 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 to me, it just seems like the civilization game that I'm really looking forward to. And so that's also pretty high on my list. Cool. Awesome. Um, so what games are you guys excited about demoing? What was that? My bad. What game My is phone music like... <laughs> about demoing? Yes. Uh, Pingo Pingo. <laughs> <laughs> All the games we just said. I mean, right? Are there any games that you know that probably aren't going to actually be there that you're excited about, like trying out? Um. All right. I'll let I'll let Mr. Pleshik answer this one first, and then I'll go. 
I don't know. I everything that's there intrigues me, but I, I haven't seen any that like that are coming to Kickstarter or anything like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I don't know if they're actually gonna have any there. I don't think they are because they just like went on to the boat. But I really want to like mess around with like the Bad Lore um undead expansion because yeah. those minis look crazy and i really like battle yeah. a lot i've been painting yeah. up all my miniatures and stuff like that for it they'll definitely but, uh, have them there on display i don't know if they'll be there for demo but i'm sure they're gonna have it there for demo because um they're actually like sending out like these early kits to a bunch of stores that are like the humans versus the undead and they're like uh, a play event to actually like do it and it comes with like this nice like mat the sort of things you would see like from fantasy flight at gen con where you're playing on on the little oh, yeah. boards that are like stuck to the table or whatever this is like oh, a, yeah. a neoprene mat that they they send out um and i'm pretty sure they're probably going to be running like that exact demo like at gen yeah. con with the undead yeah. so um because they're normally on point with their stuff so oh their booth is probably the best booth at the convention have you ever been to gen con before brandon no never this will be my first um it's huge it, the the fantasy flight booth is absolutely ginormous um and then like they have the people with the staffs because the line for the fantasy flight to get into the booth last year it wrapped around like 20 plus other booths like let's say um fantasy flight is at the very very front of Gen Con, like at the very front of the convention center. The line goes like over halfway into the back. It's it's ridiculous. Like they have a guy with a big staff that says like line starts here. Like you think, oh, fantasy fight, let me walk in. No, you're going to easily wait like 30 minutes to 45 minutes to get in. But what's cool though about fantasy flight, and they did this last year. I don't know if they'll do this this year. Um, they give you cards. And you can play like a card game while you're in line, and the whole card game you got to trade cards with people, and so it talk it it prompts you to talk to other people in line, you know, and so you kind of you make friends, you know, everyone becomes friends, um, because you're like, hey, you have that gold thing, and I need this blue thing, and let's switch up, and so that's kind of cool, but um, I'm excited to demo. On another note, um, they'll have it there. I just don't know how long they'll have it there. Uh, Spyfall. I've heard so many amazing things about that. I know Tom in the Dice Tower, they're saying it's easily the number one party game of the year. Um, and so I really want to try it out. It's just Gen Con, some companies are really weird. Like they'll only bring X product. And not that that's weird, but they either do like like last year, King of New York was a great example. It debuted at Gen Con. Yellow brought... 400 copies of the game and they did 100 copies each day and so if you weren't in line at the very beginning you didn't get a copy it didn't matter and once they sold out of 100 you couldn't say hey i'll pay ten dollars more because i tried that i'll pay more to buy one of tomorrow's they're like nope you just got to come back tomorrow and there's literally people running to get there and so i I hope there's a good uh, amount but spyfall you can also order online right now anyway we uh we download the uh, print and play for Spyfall and we've actually yeah. played like before you started coming like to game night and before we actually started doing the podcast we played like a bunch of uh, Spyfall games I think some of the first like groups that Matt came to we played a bunch of Spyfall yeah what do you think of that game Matt uh, it's not bad uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> raising so, review so I, yeah I, I feel like everybody's like super hype and I'm just like that was fun <laughs> but like I don't I would I would probably rather play like One Night Ultimate Werewolf over Spyfall. Not that Spyfall is a bad game. Uh, it certainly is like around that same time frame of completion. But um, I think the issue was you you probably should play in a group that was a bit more familiar because I felt like the way when I showed up I was like new to the group and I'm like oh yeah socially awkward me is just gonna sit here and go hello. How are you? <laughs> and they just, it was just, it, it seemed really strange. So if you're in like a good group of people who are going to be consistently like active and asking questions and stuff like that, it'll probably be fine. But I feel like when the couple of times we played it, it was very slow going when it shouldn't have been. I feel so. like a lot of that too, like um, with the actual version of the game, as opposed to like the print and play where I just had like printed out like cards that were blank. Like, it has, like, nice art, and it comes, like, with this, like, map that shows you all the locations, and, like, everything has art on it, and it looks all nice and stuff. I think a lot of that will 
make the game more exciting for that sort of thing. I think it's really cool just like the open form that the game has where you can just ask a question. Like, yeah. hey man, uh, why do you have a gun? <laughs> or something like, or do you have a gun? And you're just yeah. like, we're at the beach, man. <laughs> Obviously you're the spy. Or maybe you're just really bad at the game. Yeah. So, one Ryan thing I, Every time he plays a game, man. The only thing, the only thing that the issue that I've had with that game is, um, like, if people aren't like really trying to like do right or do the correct thing, it will like crash the game hard. Like, if yeah. somebody says something that doesn't make sense, because because basically the way it works is one person's a spy and they don't know where the location is, and everybody is at a location and they're trying to ask each other questions to weed out the spy because the spy doesn't know how to answer the questions correctly. Um, but if people just are like at the location, they just start saying crazy stuff or asking crazy questions that don't make any sense. The game just goes. So you have to play with the uh, right group. Oh god! So we had a, like. We had yeah, people it's... sometimes that just didn't want to didn't want to play not, almost. Not, not people, just a person, just a singular. I think we played a couple times yeah. when you weren't there, Matt, and there mm -hmm. was some other interesting stuff that happened. Uh, so, but I, I just, think I think the game's pretty fun, and I'm really excited to play like the finished like version, not just the print and play. So yeah, should... I'm I'm super pumped. I just hope they have enough. I know, me too. <laughs> I wouldn't mind playing it again. I just feel like. Yeah, I mean, it's like like you said. If like there's one person who's just like, I'm gonna make this a joke, it just everything's done. <laughs> and Every, they like, just get killed, and the spy wins the game. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like because he did that twice. Because he made a, a very off color comment uh, when we were at the, like the Vatican or someplace like that. Or, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Something he was just like, and it was just like, okay, <laughs> cool. I, don't I know think I was the spy that this. round, so like I immediately <laughs> knew where we were because what he yeah. said. Because like you also, when you're asking the other people questions, the spy can win the game if they figure out where they are and they actually flip over their car and they're like, "Hey, we're here." So you have to be very vague. So it's like <clears> a very <throat> subtle game um, in the way that you actually play it. So when you play with good players, it's probably extremely epic. So yeah. <laughs> You just got to get that group. <laughs> I can I can still see that there's potential, but you know, I just like you said, got to find the right folk. Nice. Another game. Also, this list of games is huge. Oh yeah, it's man. seventeen pages. It is massive. I was like, okay, it'll be like maybe 200, 250. and it's just like pages and pages. Just keeps going. That's there's, although um, I, there's from from indie boards and. Is it any boards and cards? They have the uh, one night. Uh, it's not one night resistance anymore. It's called um, one night revolution. It's like one yeah. night ultimate werewolf, but with uh, with like the yeah. resistance theme. Yep. That's yeah, yeah. apparently I think that's going to be for sale there, and also you're able to demo it. So I'd like to try that. Yeah, we have a Roy and I have a history with uh, the resistance. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh no! And so um, <laughs> that's also one of those games I played once and was like, wow, okay, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that game as well. The Resistance so. is a good game if you just want to yell at your friends. Yeah. Very <laughs> angrily. Or if you just want to start clapping because you're mad. I can't believe he just did that. <laughs> so you're telling me that you're the spy. Okay. Oh, God. I just did that because uh, the uh, first time when I won the game, um, I knew it was won. So I was just like, good job, guys. I won. And uh, <laughs> they pretty much didn't believe me at all after that game. So, um, But we, yeah, awesome games. I really want to play... Um, I know it's been out for a long time. It's not like releasing a Gen Con, but I've never gotten a chance to play uh, Two Rooms and a Boom. I don't know if you yeah. guys have seen that game yeah. or have yeah. played it at all. I have played it, but I've seen it. But uh, I like tried to download the print and play for that also and tried to figure it out and stuff. I'm like, this game seems like you need to know what you're doing to make this actually work. So I think in a convention... Like that'd be a lot of fun. It's like one of it's a hidden role sort of game, but there's two different teams. There's like the red team and the blue team, and the blue team has the president on it, and the red team is like the terrorist, and they have like a bomber on it. And basically, the red team is there's two rooms, and there's a you can like negotiate or you can vote for like leaders of each room, and they decide who switches out. Um, and there's a certain number of switches within time, but the red team is trying to end up with the bomber in the same room as the president, and the um, blue team is trying to have the president not be in the same room as the bomber. So it's just 
about having the right people in the right room and figuring out who those people are. But in this game, you're actually allowed to show other people your card. So you can go up to somebody and be like, hey, man, um, I'll show you my card if you show me yours. And you can, like, <laughs> reveal. And it's like, if they're on the same team, it's like, cool, I can kind of trust this guy, but what do they actually know? Or if, like, it's the other team, you're just like, what What do I do now? Well, I'll see you. Because <laughs> there's also a thing where if there's, like, a certain majority of teams, they can, like, re-vote for, like, the leader and stuff. It's seems very convoluted and complicated, so I wasn't able to, like, play it by myself or with my group. So it'd be awesome to play that at the convention. Sweet. Yeah. Hold on. Nice. Exactly. Cool, guys. So, um, so are there any awesome events that you guys are um, planning on going to at Gen Con? Uh, I'm definitely going to be one of the first in line for the analog t-shirt, sign my t-shirt event. <laughs> um, bringing that I'm, Sharpie. Unfortunately, that, that event plastic. sold out twice. You know, <laughs> two different right nights. I'm sorry. <laughs> He does have a, a VIP like golden membership that, for a premium price, he might be able <laughs> <Exactly>. to. <Bro. laughs> for the low, low price of thirty four ninety nine a month, I want. It's going to say like Brandon across here, and then Flesh right at the bottom. If, if you buy me all the games I want at Gen Con, I'll do anything. <laughs> anything? That's uh, kind of tempting. Not anything. <laughs> so we're in room blah 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 uh, at the Holiday Inn. Um, I'm excited, of course, for the Dice Tower one. Um, that's always fun um, to be at one of those live to be part of the show. But uh, the one I'm super, super, super pumped for um, is the uh, Fantasy Flight. Uh, in Flight Report. In Flight Report. Like, okay, just to warn everybody, there's going to be so many nerds at that one. Like, we're all <laughs> nerds, we're there. But, like, this is like. I just remember last year. I just feel like that's left, like the the fanboy things. Like if you're a Fantasy Flight fanboy, then you go to the the keynote well, that they have. Actually, yes and no. And here's why I say yes because they make great games. But if you're a Star Wars nerd, there were so many X Wing fans there. Like I'd have to say, out of all the people I was in line with, like me and two other people weren't really big X Week fans. Everybody else was showing their ships and talking about this strategy and going over this thing. And a lot of the in-flight report is going to have to do with X-Wing and Armada. They make a lot of money off of it, and the models and everything are amazing. So you're going to talk about your moneymaker. Um, and then they're always like, hey, hold your questions to the end, or please don't applause. But nobody listens to that. Like, as soon as they're like, and on wave 17, this B-9-7 dungeon bomber is coming out, you're just going to hear an applause. Like, <laughs> dungeon ah! bomber. <laughs> like, everyone's just going to go crazy. Um, and then, I, like, I remember one year in... Well, this really stuck in my mind. And just because it was so annoying, you ever get embarrassed for people when they say <laughs> something? Like this one guy was like, he's last year he shouted out, he was like, quit, why do you hate me so much? Quit hurting my wallet. And nobody laughed. I just remember like he tried to be funny at the in-flight report. And even the guy, and it wasn't Chris Peterson, it was another, uh, it was a young guy, but he was like, okay, moving on. Like, it's, <laughs> it's really awkward. <laughs> Like, he expected it to be some funny catch thing. And I just remember it because it was that awkward. But I'm super, super pumped. Because Fantasy Flight, when you get there, they're going to have um, all their cases in their displays. But there's going to be this one section of this one case. And this is what they did last year. They may not do it this year. But it's going to be blank. There's gonna I think be they've done it, like, every nothing, year. Absolutely nothing in this, in this section oh. of the case. And they don't bring out what's in that case until... Uh, the in-flight report. And so once they announce something big, if you're at the in-flight report, you'll notice about 25% of everyone leaves because they run to the Fantasy Flight booth. That doesn't mean that thing is for sale, but they just want to go check it out, and they do demos. Like last year, it was Armada. Like that case was empty, and all of a sudden they announced Armada. Now, I remember Armada, half of the in-flight report people left. Everyone took off. In Fantasy Flight, they're That's fantastic. That's crazy. They had, um, <laughs> they had like, 10 plus tables set up for demos for Armada and the wait to do a demo for Armada was easily an hour plus. Like there was just people upon people just waiting there. And they also announced Imperial Assault and that one was also huge in a lot of people but I just remember people 
wigging out for Amada last year. And so Fantasy Flight, they always come. They have the best booth. They have some of the best promos. They they have the best components. Um, it's just that's what I'm so excited for, just to see what crazy thing they're going to announce this year. And your turn, go. Twilight Imperium. No, just kidding. Star Wars edition. No, don't do it. <laughs> Bro, that would be so amazing. Get it like an army of Wookiees. Uh, just like run around. Especially if they grow like the tree people. <laughs> right? Little fur babies just running all over the place. <laughs> so what are you guys excited for? I talk way too much. Y'all need to shut me up. Um, a lot of the same stuff. Like, um, I like since this is my first year, I didn't like schedule myself out with tons of events and things like that. Um, and also so like all the games, like you have to like pay money to play the games. I'm like, I play games all the time. Why am I gonna like pay six dollars to play a game that I already own or like to learn how to play something? So I'm just planning on like going from booth to booth, like demoing, checking out stuff, taking tons of pictures for our Instagram, like all that sort of stuff. Just trying to, um, like. I guess be a media presence there almost like let people know like what's going on what's hot what's awesome and stuff like that um but and then i'm also going to go to the uh the secret cabal meetup on saturday that should be awesome too yeah hopefully uh they don't uh get kicked out I'm just kidding. <laughs> they almost did last year they uh i i guess uh something happened at origins and um yeah <laughs> kind of crazy yeah. how about you brandon yeah, much of the same that you guys mentioned. Pretty much all the same stuff. Um, yeah. I don't know. I I kind of did the same thing uh, Roy did. Didn't book a whole lot just because I just want to take it all in and not be like running from place to place. And so I'm hoping just to walk around and check it all out. And if you want to go to an event, a lot of people overcommit themselves. And so like um, you'll be able to get into one. You may have to wait till the very end. Uh, you know, until all the tickets come in. Um, but I remember last year for the Dice Tower event, uh, my friends and I, we didn't get our tickets. We didn't realize we need to get tickets. It was our very first Gen Con. So uh, we just show up at the door and they're like, uh, you have to wait over here. <laughs> and so we watched all these people go in front of us. Um, but like I would say after like 15 minutes of waiting, they're like, sure, go ahead, come on in. And so we're able to get in. It's just they have to honor the people that have the tickets. Now, that wasn't a game event that was just like you know an announcing or a show or something like that and so if you want to get in you know if you're patient and you're one of the first people there i would recommend if you don't have a ticket get there easily an hour early if you want to get in if you want to get in easily an hour early and even if you have a ticket uh for the fantasy flight and the dice tower if you want to sit somewhere well get there about 45 minutes to half an hour if not an hour early just because those are popular events Everyone is talking about it just like we are. The line is going to be out the hotel and into the streets. It was last year. Um, so it's going to be huge. Um, so check that stuff out. But you, you can get in. But one thing you guys may like, they have like two rooms, or at least they did last year, that just plays anime 24-7. Really? Yeah. Um, I know Roy and Matt are big anime fans. Like the, I wouldn't say big, but I like some stuff. They just have these two rooms that are in the hotel. They're like business rooms. And they're just 24-7, just anime, just boom, all going on all the time. <laughs> and I remember seeing some cosplay people, like, run in there like, that's our show! They're playing our show! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody yeah. coming in, like, dressed up like Totoro, like, oh, Shogeku, Shogeku no Soma, and, like, just screaming Japanese words, and you're like... You will see a yeah, lot of you guys. cosplay there. Uh, the cosplay is ridiculous. Some is amazing. Some is, like, you spend a lot of time. Others is, like... like Seriously, that was a toilet roll yesterday. Like, you literally <laughs> just took a toilet roll and did some other stuff with it. So, um, the cosplay stuff is uh, is crazy. But, yeah, you'll see that in the anime rooms. People are just coming in and out, dressed up as characters. How, how crazy is just, like, the mass amounts of people that are there? Okay, so Thursday is going to be busy. Uh, Thursday, I think, is a little bit busier than Friday just because – Everyone wants to get that new game because people know games sell out quick. Um, so Thursday is going to be crazy, especially if you're trying to get that new game. Like, for example, Plaid Hat last year brought almost 500 copies of Dead of Winter, and within three hours, they were all sold out. It was just, boom, they're gone. People are going. They're If it's a hot game and you want to get it, Thursday's the day to get it, unless they do the quantities version like 100 a day. Friday is a lot of fun. Thursday and Friday are not as busy as Saturday. Saturday 
is going to be easily 70,000 plus people. Like when they did the 60,000 for last year, that's averaging over all four days. Sunday is the family day. A lot of booths are already shutting down. They're not going to be active. So Sunday, you have maybe 30,000 people there. That's also like the free kid day. So it's not it's not like you friendly or us friendly. You'll still be able to get stuff. But Saturday, like it's almost going to be claustrophobic. Like Friday, we're going to be able to walk around and I'm going to be comfortable. I'm going to have my backpack on. I'm not going to be bumping into people. Things are going to be good. Saturday, it's going to be like, who's touching my butt? Like why <laughs> is somebody touching my butt right now? And, and it all depends it's on like where you go. It's like you're literally in a mosh pit, basically. You really are, because the the room is huge, and so just sticking seventy thousand people in a room is already a lot of people. But now sticking seventy thousand people in a room full of product, full of uh, tables, full of you know display models and all that stuff, it just makes a big room even smaller. And then you add all of us in it. And I will say one of the things I love about Gen Con is I feel so good about myself when I come home. Like my self esteem is like through the roof because, like, there's gonna be some people there, and I'll just, I'm just gonna throw this out there. You gotta if be nice, Rob. Con, take a shower. Take a shower. <laughs> like I like to eat. I'm a big guy. I get it. But you don't have to smell like what you're eating. Like, please take a shower. And so, like, every time I come home from Gen Con, I just look at my wife and I'm like, "You've got it so good. You don't even realize <laughs> it could be so much worse." Like, just love me right now. <laughs> um, so I, I love that about Gen Con, but it's going to be crazy. And you're going to see a lot of costumes and people are kind of picky about their costumes. Don't just jump in and take a picture with anybody. Um, but some costumes are uncomfortably big. Like there's some anime guys that have like these huge swords and weapons and like guns, like some of the weapons and things they have are easily bigger than the people. <laughs> so expect to get hit by some things or bumped and touched. They're not trying to be mean. It's just it's going to be that crazy. Saturday is going to be absolutely crazy. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're never going to forget it. Um, but if you're going to buy anything, do it Thursday or Friday. Um, also, when you go to buy stuff, they really don't haggle with you. I mean, you're you're going to pay sticker price. And uh, make sure you bring some cash. Not all cash. But some places uh, don't do uh, credit cards. They're just like, nope, we're just going to do straight cash. And so, like the big places, like your Fantasy Flight booth, your Asthma Day booth, um, you know, your Cool Stuff Inc. booth, like they're going to have um, credit card machines. But, like, let's say you go to the indie area, you're going to have to have cash with you because they don't, they don't do all that stuff. So, it's just – it's hard to describe, but it's not hard to describe. It's just 60,000-plus nerds all trying to buy the same board game at the same time, and we're all trying to play games. And they have an amazing library of games there. And so if you just want to, like, play some games and go in the library. And also, I didn't learn this until the last day last year. So you're in the huge convention center. Some of these companies, like the convention center has got rooms outside of the convention center. And I didn't realize that. Some of these companies rent out those rooms to do even more demos. So everyone's going to be running around demoing the games in the middle of the convention hall. Well, check out some of the rooms that are lining the convention hall. You'll like you'll see the company banners. They'll have like ten more copies in there for you to demo, and the the rooms aren't full. And so, if you want to get like a full game in, like let's say you really like a game and you want to try out that full game before you buy it, you can usually go in there and play that full game, which is a lot, a lot of fun. I love that idea, and it's kind of like a hidden gem. Not a lot of people know about those rooms because everyone's in the convention center or they're around. Um, you've got food trucks galore. They have food trucks for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. Is, um, don't is there, eat the food. Uh, is there a place where you can um, like play like open gaming? Like, say you brought a game, or like you bought a game and you want to play with your friends. What's the best place to like go and do something like that? Um, your hotel. Whether you're allowed or... to or not. Well, our hotel, we're like ten, we're like fifteen minutes away, and so our hotel, not so much. Because then you have to pay for parking every time. But there's hotels that are connected to it. If you have your Gen Con badge, no one's going to mess with you if you go to like a hotel lobby that's connected and just sit at a table and start playing. So you can play there. There's also tables on the outskirts of Gen Con uh, where people can sit down and play games or you find a corner and, and people play games. It's just, you know, you have that idea and so does everyone else has that idea. They bought right. the game and they want to play it. So you just 
Like, when we played our games, it was usually when we went back to the hotel room, and uh, we were like, bro, we're going to play this. Let's break it out. You know, someone would read the rules as we're driving back. Let's get out there. It's going to set it up, and let's play it. And so you're not going to sleep a lot. Um, you're just going to play a lot of games. Um, but, yeah, there's there's little pockets you're going to find all over the place. I do think you you have to pay to get into the library. Yeah. To play the library. But... Um, it is huge. Like, if you want to play, like, a dedicated game, like, I'm going to bring some games with me. And so let's say we get together and we're like, hey, Friday at 2 o'clock, let's all meet up and play Specter Ops. It may not be so bad to pay that couple bucks to get in there because they're going to have, like, a thousand tables set up. So we'll have the room. We know we can play. You know, it's not like people are just going to run up to us and mess with our stuff or things like right. that because we're so famous. Like, I hate when people are asking to take my picture. I was like, look, man, I'm just here as a fan myself. Like, please, please. <laughs> like, I just want to play my game that I bought, okay? Like, please calm down. So. Whoo, that exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions, Brandon, about Gen Con? Um, I don't know. I, I've been to a, a, a Comic-Con thing called C2E2 in Chicago uh -huh. near me, and that's pretty huge. So I How kind many of people go to that? Uh, I think it's like thirty or forty thousand. I think. That's awesome. Um, but that's more like just straight up comic books. Right. Very little tabletop gaming and stuff. But so I've kind of been in that environment before, but mm -hmm. not so much like just gaming. So that's I'm pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. I I was I was actually going to ask you about if there's places to play games because that that was my biggest question. Yeah, there are. You just got to find them. My yeah, closest sure. my closest experience to be packed with that many uh, people would be like a music concert or warp tour. Yeah. So hopefully people don't mind if I break out in mosh pit and like do a circle pit. Like, <laughs> right. Is hardcore dancing allowed? Uh yes, and there's people that are gonna be LARPing as you go around. Oh no. Um, so cool. So you can joking. you can there's like... a couple booths where you can buy the weapons and you'll see people like fighting. Um, like in the you... crowd? That sounds like a bad idea. Yeah. Sounds amazing actually. <laughs> also, Bobber also sword. People, um, you'll see a lot of people selling steampunk stuff and so you'll see like a lot of girls like they have a couple sections where you can go try on corsets and crazy stuff and it's like it's just it's it's ridiculous. Anything Rob, did you, you think try of? on the corset? <laughs> no, but I was thinking about this year. Like let's all go get a group photo with all of us with a corset on. Hang on. I just you said there are girls there. <laughs> no, there there are females. There's like there. a couple. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a good there's a good uh, crowd of females. The only problem is like like I feel bad for like pretty women there because nerds yeah. don't know how to handle pretty women. They really don't. And so like there's a lot of like oogling because there are some booths there that have professional cosplayers there, whether it's yeah. male or female. And so you'll just see like a lot of people just like just standing there, just sweating, like looking at Matt's <laughs> beard, just like <laughs> that was like, that was kind of how I felt. And stuff like that, and so um, I mean, there's definitely going to be like, like I said, like I said, every time I leave, I feel better about myself. <laughs> it's like that self-esteem pill that I need. I'm like, you know, I'm just good. I'm good. Oh um, man! Don't eat the food that's in the convention center. Go to the food trucks or go to a restaurant because um, it's like stadium food, but it's like cheap stadium food. It's like plastic cheese and things like that. <laughs> food trucks are amazing, and they're all over the place. Um, but I definitely would love to meet up with Brandon and like play a game or do something. Or or if we go out to dinner. Um, I ate last year at Dick's Last Resort, which was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I had a buddy with me uh, who's a little bit bigger than Matt. And, you know, they put hats on your head, and they wrote on his hat, like, I beat anorexia. And it was just like... <laughs> And they put on me, like, I love blowing bubbles. And they put on my friend right beside me, I am bubbles. <laughs> and, um, like, it's just, it's crazy. It's inappropriate. But the food is really good, and it's just fun. I've never been to anywhere like that before. But if you guys want to do, like, a group dinner or something one night, I'd totally be down. But uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. It's, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. And we leave tomorrow. We leave tomorrow night. Hopefully we won't die on our way. Hey, speaking of, are you bringing any games? Or is there any games you want me to bring? You can bring whatever. I'm going to try not to bring a lot since I have to, like, switch yeah. hotel rooms and stuff. Um, I am bringing if I ashes. Buy stuff, if I buy stuff, I might, I don't know, I might send some stuff back with you. I'm probably not going to buy much, but, like, if I have just... Hey, I'll totally do that, too. Cool. 
I'll, I'll bring it back. Brandon, do you want me to bring anything? <laughs> Only your good looks. No. <laughs> <laughs> right? Rob's like, why isn't this guy on the podcast every week? Brandon, you're beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I am bringing ashes because I want Isaac to sign ashes. I got my copy in the other day, and uh, I feel like people are going to be rushing to get that game there. Yeah. Oh man, when I brought out Dead of Winter last year, because uh, I got it before Gen Con, I was actually one of the first people ever to get it. Long story, I won't tell it, but um, I brought out my copy and I had Isaac and Colby sign it, and people were giving me looks like, this "Put guy. that down, and I will steal it," because like, <laughs> like, that game was so hot. That game, like, you had to wait over an hour to demo that game. That game was really, really big. Um, and it, can you imagine? It's still, like, at, like, it's still on back order, and it's just now coming around to its one-year anniversary. Like, that's how popular that game has been, um, which is, it's such a phenomenal game anyway. But, um, uh, Brandon, have you ever seen uh, Corey from uh, Pla- uh, from Fantasy Flight? Like Corey Chesnick? Kinezka? Corey Kaneska, he's so small. He's like five foot nothing. And last year he had this awful bowl um, haircut like those skaters used to do with his goatee. And um, I totally just came up and like man hugged him and he had no idea who I was. Just came out of nowhere. And I was like, <laughs> I'm such a huge fan of yours. I love Mansions of Madness. And he's like, please don't eat me. Like, <laughs> He's just like, you know what? I love personal space. Right. Step off. I think he was like demoing a game to somebody, but I just ran up to him. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so um, like, I don't do that to embarrass people. I'm just, I'm a fan of the hobby. Like if you make a good game, I want, I like, like to me, that's the people that I spend a lot of my money and my time on. So, you know, just like your actors and stuff. You know, people want their pictures with them. I appreciate what you do. I'm really excited and just being, I know people are going to be crazy busy, but just being able to say, hey, and like, I enjoy your stuff to like all these people, like the, the other like board game media guys and like a bunch of these designers and everything and the, the publishers and stuff, just being able to be like, you guys are awesome. I like your stuff. I'll say this. Every single person I did that to last year was so cool. And in fact, they encourage it. So like it's some of the nicest people that you'll meet because our hobby is still really small and they don't have to suck up to us but they want us to buy their products so everyone is like super friendly so like even when you go to the dice tower guys they're all going to be really cool like i remember tom and i talking for a couple minutes and taking pictures with him and z and like even Corey, he was like super cool about it just the plat hat guys everyone is just like very friendly and so and i know they say this but if you see somebody that you know and you recognize, go say hi. They want you to say hi. You know, they they want to see your appreciation for what they've done. You know, they're fans as well. So don't be embarrassed by that at all. Take my picture. I mean, if you want, I'll have a line. Just come. Take my picture. <laughs> Mm. Okay, doke guys. Well, we've gone over a little bit for the podcast, so I guess we'll pretty much have to cut it off here. I'm so sorry, Brandon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Please still be my friend. <laughs> oh, no, man, it's good. awesome. But we are super excited about Gen Con. So um, if you guys um, see us in the needle in a haystack that is Gen Con, make sure yeah, you've got to put that out. Day. You've got to like get to work because you got to put this out before we leave tomorrow. I know. I'm going to make this happen. Um, and uh, we're also going to have buttons. Um, yes. So make sure to come uh, grab some of those from us. Um, what was that off of Office Space? Like Flare? Are we going to have Flare? Is that what it yeah. was off of Office Space? Yeah. It's like yeah. a bunch of Flare. <laughs> like shaking, just rattling constantly. Yes. Please bring like different kinds of buttons, Brandon. I just want to be covered in your buttons. <laughs> oh, God. Just a bunch of Flare buttons. But yeah, <laughs> um... So uh, it should be a good time. Um, we stream the podcast live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we play board games on Friday, except for this Friday, because um, we will be at Gen Con. We play board games every Friday um, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we play all sorts of crazy stuff. We just basically stream our game night. Um, Brandon, where can they find you? You can go to uh, the website, www. Wow www.analoggamer.com I don't know why I did the W's. No one uses those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm on Instagram at, at analoggamer.com and Twitter underscore at analoggamer.com nice. No. Analog Gamer. Just straight up Analog Gamer. No underscore? 
No, no, the, yes, the underscore, anal- no dot com. Guys, I am tired, and I <laughs> have been up since six o'clock. <laughs> and we've kept you up far past oh, the uh, podcast off time. Wow. Twitter, good. at underscore analog gamer. Done. <laughs> nice. Hit us up on Instagram and Twitter, too. That's uh, at Epic Gaming Night. And uh, make sure to uh, check out all the other podcasts and awesome things. And so you can find me at B. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, since I'm not going to be at Gen Con, be sure to touch Rob's butt for me. Oh, my goodness. I just I just want to see how much that happens. So, <laughs> you, if you, no, if you get filled. Saturday is like that. Rob, Rob's going to be like, do you listen to the podcast? They're going to be like, no, what podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Either that or Rob's just going to be walking around. People are just going to be constantly like, patting his butt. And he's just like, what in the world? <laughs> I'll be like, yes. But listen, every single time someone touches my butt, I'm just going to be like, that's another listener. <laughs> Whether they admit it or not, I'm just like, yes. You're going to have no <laughs> clue. Okay, oh, no, guys, thanks oh, for uh, coming out. Yeah. You're the best. Around. Nothing's See ever going to keep you down. next time. Are we in the after show? No. Almost. Mm. Peace. Getting meta. Goodbye. Done. So, Brandon, Man. you want-